What's up internet world and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the 2022 Land Rover Defender 110. So last week we had the Defender 90 and we took it off-roading in Darren Noren's 166 acres of mud, which is super fun. But this week, totally different because we have a 110. So what is the difference? Well, for starters, the 110 costs $900 more. Yes, the base price of a two-door costs 66,100 and this four-door costs $67,000. So what is the difference? Two extra doors, 900 bucks, seems like a good deal. Well, it's great because today we have a base one. Yes, not fully loaded like we normally do. We've got something that is base. A 110 base that we're strictly doing on-roading. So you can get five different trim levels in the 110. You can get the base, you can get the X Dynamic, you can get the X, and then of course the V8, and then the V8 Carpathian Edition. So on the front of this base Defender, yes, you have the same similar design, except you're missing the ring around the headlights. You also do get headlight washers, and then moving below, you do not get fog lights, but you do get this cool little design here on the other one as well, but they keep the quality. You see, they don't drop the quality. This is really, really nice to the touch. And then of course, I move along here. It also continues on the bottom, all these circular rings, but above it, it's square. Circular here, square there. And yes, there is a camera hiding down here. We give you a 360 visuals all the way around. Yes, it does have lane keep. It also does have automatic braking because of course, safety first. Now look over here. Yes, they do have the Defender written nice and clean and gloss back that I love. And then how about these hamburger buns? Yum, yum. Now people said yum. they're not gonna watch our video unless we bring a V8. So I thought we'd bring the four cylinder because maybe they wanna save some money. So under the hood here, you've got a four cylinder turbo that makes 296 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. And that has made it to a ZF eight-speed transmission with the two-speed transfer box for that low slope grade. It does zero to 60 in 7.4 seconds, and yes, it is all-wheel drive. I love its utilitarian styling, and if you're from Slovakia, comment below because this is where it's made. Now take a look at these wheels. These are 19 inch wheels with the off-road tires. So they're totally different with what the Bronco has. The Bronco has 35s or 37s, more of an off-road type tire. This sort of competes with it maybe, but this is more street, more calm, more luxurious. This is a fake intake, but on the other side is the real one. That's where the air gets sucked in for the engine. Now moving along here, look at these side mirrors. These must be the world's smallest side mirrors on any SUV I've seen. Even the Volkswagen Taos has bigger side mirrors. Thank you for letting me know it's a Defender and thank you for putting 360 cameras out here because that is fantastic. And let me show you how they look like. And what you did not fix, Mr. Defender, is this. The key is in my hand. It does not unlock front or back. Yes, you give me this little button that I can lock or unlock it, but I have to press the button to unlock it. Ew. Although this might be a huge blind spot problem, it looks so cool in other colors. But the cool feature is on these roof rails that you can slide items in, it can hold up to 660 pounds of static weight. That means when the car is parked, 660 pounds of humans can sit on there. Back of the Defender 110. Check out the back. And this is important because it doesn't say P300. Maybe they don't want anybody to know, but a P300 is the four cylinder. The P400 is the six cylinder. And then the P525 is the eight. Now, visually speaking, this is primo. Just like the short wheel base, I love the way these backlights look. Look how I can put my finger right underneath these lights. How cool, how different, how British. So how much does the Defender tow? Well, hmm. Yes, 7,700 pounds, not lying. How much room do we have in the back of this Defender? We've got 37 deep. How wide is this box? 38, just like the other one. And this one is 35 high. And with the seats folded down, how much room do we have? So to the back of the middle of the center console, we've got just over six feet. That is a ton of room. And then in terms of width, as far as its biggest access point, we've got just about four feet. So you've got six by four. 
On the back here we have some interesting contraptions. Yes, you have a plug. You can simply plug in a 110 voltage right there. But what about this? Is this a fire extinguisher? Let's put our hand here and try to pull it out and yeah, she comes out. And behind here, is this a toolkit? No, it's a fuse box. But it doesn't stop there. You have a rail system that you can slide backwards and forwards and tie down really, really good quality. And of course, it's really durable hamburger type material on the bottom here. And yes, you do have a cigarette voltage plug you have there. And then of course, air suspension to make it easy to load in and out. So drop, baby, drop. And yes, this isn't leaf springs. This is coil suspension. Back door of the Defender 110. Now, yes, you have a lot of room for the kids to get in and out because otherwise you'd be buying a 90, right? So as far as this door goes, I wish the door opened up a little bit more. I just feel like it's a little bit crammed as I come through. A little bit more would be nice and primo. But the cool part about it is that, yes, the kids can see if there's a car coming and if it's safe to open the door right here. Nice touch. Defender. Now getting in, you will see that if I want to put the seats down, I simply lift this one up and then put this seat down. So pretty straightforward stuff. I do have to drop these two headrests down, give it a little bit of a tug. Okay, come on, tug. There we go. Then they come down and voila, it's a pretty flat, easy floor to work with. And again, pretty scratch resistant, tough material they use there. So all the way up, come on. Goes up there, up there, comes down and voila. That's how you put the seats down in the Defender 110. Now jumping in here, a lot of nice accessories and do you hear that? Really good quality. Open the door, close the door again. Nice rubberized feeling as I fit in here. Nice industrial feel, nice and modern, and really nice and black. I like the black on the outside and black inside. It's really like utilitarian, as I mentioned earlier. But what does it give you as far as the kids and plugins? You've got two USB-Cs right here. You've got two cigarette lighters on both sides. And then of course you have another USB in the seat per seat per side. That's a nice touch and of course you do have a mounting system that you can mount a TV in the back here. Pretty smart for Land Rover, the Range Rover to do that. And then as far as putting magazines here, because you know the kids love to read, but they do like to drink. So voila, you got two cup holders here for them. And let's go to the front. Front seat of the Defender 110. Let's jump in and explain why these mats are the weirdest ones I've ever seen. You see, it has a rubberized floor with a carpet on top for clips, but you can't change this carpeted floor. You just lift and lift and voila, that is the rubberized floor. So it gets nice and dirty, easy to clean, except how do you clean it? You just spray with water all the way here so that water can get to the electronics. Yes, they've done a good job by wrapping it all the way up as you can see over here, but it can still get underneath the sore, that little sill right there. Really cool, robust idea. I like everything in this vehicle because they're kind of thinking about it. Like even the center bracing, it's all one piece and you can see it. It's all exposed and nice. And these awesome, cool grab handles on either side are nice. Everything's really industrial and strong. Nothing feels plasticky or cheap. There's some weird things about it, just like the HVAC. Not the smartest idea. Some of the controls are pretty difficult to use. Like if I wanted to adjust the fan speed, I have to simply press this button, then go to this one to adjust the fan speed for the whole car. That doesn't make any sense, does it? And similarly, if I was gonna change my drive modes, I have to hit this button and then it pops up on this massive 10.1 inch screen, which is awesome, I might add, and you can toggle it all the way through. So in this specific case, I've got eco, I've got comfort, grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, sand, rock crawl, and my favorite, Wade Sensen. Check out the water. I really like the fact that even on the base model, you get this awesome steering wheel, this really nice to touch leather, and then this graphite type material on the inside in this off-white color. Beautiful steering wheel, awesome, good job, Defenders. Now, obviously there's no paddle shifters, not important on this, something like this, but the cool part about it is the fact that everything else is really tough, tough materials. Again, no plastic, just good pieces. But one unique, weird part is if I put my bottle in here, it's pretty tough to get it in. They have really tough, clampy sort of cup bottle holder. So if you have anything not as tough as this, then yeah, good luck trying to get it in. But cool part, they do have wireless charging right there. And because this is a base model, you don't get a fridge. Boo. Two more cool features you can get on the Defender. One is you can get a jump seat. So instead of this big bad boy, you can get a seat that sits here and you get a third visor that pops down to block the sun for your little eyes. But the most important feature, which is my favorite, is this rear view mirror camera. You see, I can see right here and I can see what is behind me. Not only because if I fill this thing full of luggage and I put the roof rack full of luggage, how am I gonna see out the back? This thing is nice and high, primo. Good afternoon.
Good afternoon to you too. Now we've already reviewed this infotainment on the Jaguar and the Defender and the Discovery as well. Now the old Defender, which is the 2021, which is the short wheelbase that we did, had a slightly smaller screen. This is a 10.1 inch screen and I love the way this color contrast is. It's just not bam in your face. It's very elegant and clean. Kind of reminds me of a really good quality Genesis. Now, if we start for the home screen, you'll see you have navigation, phone, and media, and you can change this up just by simply editing. Look how easy it is to edit. You can have different titles on what is important to you. So if you're always wade sensing, then you can set up the wade sensing and slide it right here. So it hides right on these icons here, but it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward stuff. You can just hit this button and this will give you all the different information that you have. So like me, I like to know vehicle dimensions. How big is this thing? Is it really as big as it looks? Voila, there you have it. You see the length of the car, but also the angle approach and the departure approach, pretty cool items to know, especially if you're taking this thing off road. You do have air suspension, so you can raise it to the highest level, which is pretty cool that you can do that in something this awesome. Now, obviously that's pretty much common knowledge in anybody that's gonna look at a Discovery or a Defender. Yes, this is why one would buy a Land Rover. So my favorite part here is the off-road feature where you can click this button and you can see through the front of the car where you can see basically where the wheels are going. That is really advantageous if you are taking this thing off-road. So great feature, good on you, Defender. So if you wanna see me go in depth in these screens, you can click one of our other reviews and check it out over there. Now on the base model, you don't get colorful ambient lighting. Boo, now let's take it for a drive. In the Land Rover Defender 110 with the four cylinder. So the first question is, how is this to daily drive and what does it sound like? Well. It's a four cylinder, two liter turbo that sounds like every other four cylinder, two liter turbo with a ZF transmission. So drivetrain is pretty much like every other car that is made today. They all make ZF transmissions. They all have two liter turbos. It's pretty standard stuff, nothing crazy. But where it does excel though, is the fact this is a box and visibility is really good, with the exception of that thing over there. So because this is a Land Rover product, they obviously get a lot of feedback from the Range Rover because this seat is great. Yes, it is not fully automatic. The bottoms are manual and even the pumping up and down action is manual. But what is not manual and automatic is this, that I can slide my seat back and forward. Like check this out, that is all powered. Now obviously they have a good idea of how to sit really comfortably because the Range Rovers have those little like armrests you can put your arms on. So they kind of understand that it doesn't have it. So replace it with some good solid cushioning right here. And so it's really soft, really good feeling when I'm sitting in it. So the seat, thumbs up. Visibility, pretty good, not bad, except that thing majiggy over there. Steering, pretty soft and straightforward. It's a little bit rolly, a little bit comfortable. It's not stiff by any means. You can hear the little, noise, road noise when you go over the lines in the road, you can kind of hear that, but it, overall it feels really good and solid. It's just really hard to do SUVs now because unless they're performance SUVs, then you can actually notice a difference because they all kind of drive the same. There's nothing about it that's like, wow, this thing drives amazing. That's why we wanted to do the off-roading one on the shorter wheelbase to show what can the off-roading Defender do. So we're filming two cars this week. We're filming the Maserati and we're filming this Defender. Now the Maserati, people only complain about depreciation. And on the Defender, they only complain about reliability. Foot to the ground on the four cylinder turbo. Hundred. I think that was like 7.4 seconds is what they say. That felt like 7.4 seconds. But yes, they complain about reliability. But the funny part is, nobody keeps cars for a long time anymore. They're not buying a Defender and keeping it for 20 years. No, it's like turnover, fast, three years, tops, and that, warranty. And then when they have to change it up or replace it, it doesn't matter, because the first guy paid all the money. Yeah. Seriously speaking though, if you want something different, that looks different, that feels different, and inside the cabin feels very rugged, there's not too many options you can pick you can say G-Wagon, but it's way more money. You can say Bronco, but it's way cheaper and way more rugged and way more wind noise. Hmm, so what do you want? You want something that looks kind of different and cool? Well, this is the middle ground, the Defender 110. Hope you guys like this video, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.